Yo, Siaji, uh, I got the hoodie. Can I start tomorrow? How's it going, everyone? Zona right here coming at you with another video. Today, guys, we're going to talk about a CLG announcement. They finally announced that they're recruiting a new League of Legends roster for their LOL Academy team. And they did a very long post on their website, and I really wanted to talk about it. Like, what are the requirements in a pro gamer? How to become a pro gamer? What are they looking for, despite the fact that you need to be, like, challenger and very good at the game? So I'm actually very curious. So let's look at the post together and see what's up. All right, guys. So we're on the website of CLG, and this is the post. CLG LOL Academy Open Recruitment. Have you ever thought to yourself, if given an opportunity, you could become the next rising star of League of Legends? Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> are, you are you ready to challenge yourself and become better? Yeah. If so, CLG is currently doing an open recruitment for our League of Legends Academy team. So Academy team is usually the team that is supposed to play in Challenger League. The thing below LCS, but sometimes they just play like uh, screams or like small events and they just rise from this. If you have the dedicated and hunger to not just be a part of creating the number one uh, league team in the world, but carving a path in esports under the banner of CLG, then come check us out. Little intro, little thing to hype you up, asking you the questions. If you really want it, then maybe that's what it is. By the way, guys, if you watch this video right now, I mean, you can still apply. So if you guys are a challenger and you're watching my channel, which I don't understand why, but hey, what's up, man? Uh, go ahead and apply, bro. You have nothing to lose, and you might as well ask for some feedback from them if you want to apply in, a, in another team later. So, here are the requirements. One, two, three, four, five, six requirements. You are always striving to become the best and currently hold the rank of challenger. Alright, this is just the basic shit. Like, you're striving to become the best, okay? You want to be pro, basically. And you're rank challenger. This is like, for me, it's a no... It's a no-brainer. Like, if you're not a challenger, you're not going to be an LCS pro because of so many little reasons that you have to fix. So if you're, even if you're like high master, it's real high. Even if you're low challenger, sometimes it's hard to become pro. Like sometimes teams will look at the rank one and they'll be like, okay, this guy, we need to email him and see what's up because we need him in our team or on our academy team. So even low challenger have trouble finding a team like that. You are not a one trick pony. You have a diverse champion pool and you maintain an understanding of champions and match up within your role on a given patch. So this is really interesting. So first of all, you're not a one trick pony. So if you're like an OTP Lee Sin, like Akali, all that stuff, and you go challenger with just playing Akali, like some of the YouTubers we see today, it's not because they're good at one champion that they're good at the game, they're just good at one specific champion, which is very bad if you want to become pro. Like if you want to climb, OTP is a good solution. If you want to be fast to diamond, if you want to go fast to master, it's a good solution. But once you want to start to go pro, if you're limited by your champion pool, they will just ban your OTP and you won't be able to do anything. This is what happened to, for example, when Frogan started to play League of Legends, he only knew how to really play Anivia and everyone was banning Anivia, 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 Anivia. For like four seasons, people were banning Vayne from double lift. Always, 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 always because he was just too good and it was just a mistake for the enemy team to leave him with that champion. So no one trick pony guys. No, no one trick ponies. You have a diverse champion pool. It means that you can play, let's say you, you play jungle, you can play like aggressive jungle, you know how to counter jungle, you know how to play tanky jungles. If you play like ADC, you know how to play something like Vayne or something like uh, more spell dependent like Lucian. Like you know how to play a little bit of everything depending on the role. And obviously, you know how to play what is the meta, like, oriented, like, within your role on a given patch. So it means that it's also important to know that if you're good on 7.15, that you're not going to be totally irrelevant on 7.18 or 8.0 and all that stuff. Like, you need to be an overall good player that can adapt to different patch, that can adapt and that can really work hard to become the best on every single patch. Because, well, the game changes a lot. And some pro gamers are very good at a meta, and some are not. And some are really good at start, and then when the meta changed, they just become really bad. For example, um, I think it was Dyrus, one of the f the second top liner of TSM after the Rain Man. He was so good when he started because the meta was really onto him. But then even he told us, like he told the community, like the meta for top laner is is not good for me, and I can't be at the best uh, that I'm that I want to be. So. A lot of programmers get affected by meta changes. Sometimes they're really hardcore, and sometimes they're less like they're less 
impactful like there's not there has not been like a huge changes to like support player or even like mid laner i feel like top laner is the role that changed the most over the course of the years it's actually insane so third requirement there's an understanding that to become the best means a lot of dedication and hard work you're prepared to spend hours a day screaming and analyzing a gameplay but i'm sure that clg has a really good infrastructure i mean they they have a lot of money they've been in the industry for many many years and everything that is screaming and gameplay analysis i think they have a team around this and screaming like i'm pretty sure they're gonna ask you to move to la if you're accepted and they must have like a pc in a house for you uh so that shouldn't be really uh hard it's, i mean if you want to be a programmer you're gonna have to play all day every day that's that's what you expect i'm pretty sure you you're expecting that right and understand to become the best means a lot of dedication hard work this is just a phrase that is kind of, I mean, it's just a phrase you need to put out there. Like, it's just part of the requirements. Sure, yeah, I'll be dedicated and hardworking. As any sport, it's not just about the game, but it's about building a positive brand and image. Well, this is just for CLG's benefit. You're prepared to spend extra hours to help CLG at events and promotion. I mean, this, of course, of course, like when you go to TwitchCon and your, your team, your manager is asking you to sign an autograph. Basically, that means just don't be a bitch and just do it. Meet your fans, meet people that support you, like be present on Twitter, tweet stuff when we ask you to tweet stuff. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like some social media branding and image requirements when you you become a pro at such a respectable and big organization. English may not be your native language, but communication is important in any sport. Therefore, you must be proficient in both written and verbal English to be considered. That's interesting because they're not saying that you should be from NA at all. So if you guys are watching this and you're from like Turkey or like, like wherever you are, like European server, even Australian servers, as long as you can speak English at a minimum level, you're fine. Even if you're like Korean, Japanese, Chinese, etc. Like if you have a like if you have enough knowledge in English that you can communicate and understand, that you should be pretty much cool. And the last one, what is a team if you cannot be there to bound and learn from one another, be able to relocate to Los Angeles? So that's what I told you for the third point when I say um, analyzing and day screaming. You're gonna have to be able to move to LA, but Trust me, like if you're accepted to CLG Academy, you want to go to LA. Like LA is hella dope as a city. Uh, I'm pretty sure they will hook you up with the visas for for pro gamer. Now they do this, you'll be like a professional athlete. Um, so they ask you to relocate, of course, because those are the best condition for a team to shine and to work hard together. Uh, it's also about like team bonding. So you ha you tend to receive better feedback and be more efficient with people you know and when when they're your friends you have no problem like talking real to someone whereas like if you if i don't know you and we play together i will have trouble saying oh you know maybe you should do this instead of that for me like i don't think the gaming house is the perfect environment for pro gaming but i do think that being in the same city and meeting in person like not being over skype or discord is super important like it builds bonds i think this is what i was trying to do with the team i coached uh, in the small, like, underdog esports, the small organization I was working at. But, of course, a house requires founding and a lot, a lot of money. If you guys are scared to move into LA, maybe this is not for you, but you might as well do it. Like, this is full of opportunity. The city is full of opportunity. You're going to be able to play in the studios, maybe. And CLG Low Academy is the future of LCS. Like, the best players from Low Academy roster will probably go to LCS once a player or a spot gets free on the LCS. Like, a player leaves or uh, decides to retire or change a team or change path or whatever. How to apply. Please email the following information, blah, blah, blah. Name, age, role. Role. Okay, so you need to actually pick a role. I don't know. They don't say roles, so I might as well, like, say I'm good at one role. Um, I mean, there's a main role and there's a secondary role, so they're asking for only one role. So you cannot say, oh, I can play mid, but I can play jungle. I say that because we have a lot of pro gamers that started, like, as one role and go to another. Uh, for example, Afrumu, he was support, then ADC, then support again. Uh, XPK was top, then he was mid. Uh, then I think he went back to top. Uh, we saw high going from mid to jungle. Like, we see a lot of movements, right? Like, in a lot of... Pro gamers know how to play the game so well that they're actually able to play many roles at professional level. So here they ask you for one role. The address, the server, so actually they recruit from any server, so not NA only. List of accounts, social media, prior experience in competitive League of Legends, list of champion pools, super interesting. I'm pretty sure they're going to look you up in stuff like Law Kings and all those data websites. 
or they might as well ask Rodgins for data on a player in particular. But besides that, they asked for a cover letter. Okay, so I'm actually surprised they haven't put the cover letter here. So you're going to send your email, and the cover letter, so what, if you don't know what a cover letter is, it's basically a way for you to tell people how, why you want the job, why you're a good fit for the job, and I mean for normal jobs at least, not for programming jobs, but it's how you say, okay, like this is how valuable I can be to the company, this is why I, I'm motivated to do it. It's just a cover letter that goes over your resume usually. So here they need a 1,000 explaining, no more than 1,000 word. Motivation, what are you, what are, oh my god, what are your motivation to joining the team? It's like, why do you want to be a programmer? Why, why you and not the thousand others that are going to apply for the same role as you? Why you would be a good fit for the academy team? Like, okay, I guess this is a bit correlated to the first question. Like, why you and not the others? Uh, basically, like, you need to say, oh my god, I'm extremely motivated. I'm working so hard. I'm ready to put in the hours. I'm ready to like to get feedbacks, I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to do that. This is just hardcore saying, I'm ready to work hard, I'm ready to be the best, I'm challenger, 1 million LP, that's what's up. That's literally what you need to do. Experience in competitive league of legend with, of, with an organization slash team. So obviously, if you guys have worked before with another team, this will really push your application uh, forward because I'm pretty sure they're going to do like some steps so they're going to have a huge stack of emails and then they're going to be like okay let's keep people that have experience or let's keep people who have experience in the challenger team or let's keep people who actually played in the LCS or in another academy team and they're going to eliminate, eliminate like readers the stack readers the stack and this is super important so if you guys have experience in gaming make sure you put it make sure you put the role you play make sure you link even link some highlights be like hey I made a playlist on YouTube, of here are the games I did, blah, 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 so you can actually watch your replay. That could be very, very interesting. And then to say, we look forward to reading your application. So that was it, guys. It was just a small video on CLG. I was really curious, and I wanted to share with you guys what actual... Uh, what an actual organization like CLG, which is like the biggest, if not one of the biggest uh, organization in North America right now for esports, and I wanted to know what they really wanted because before I used to be, oh, let's just pick challenger players, email them, make them try out, and then see what's up. Here, it, they really have a process of application. They ask you for cover letters. They want you. They want to know if you're dedicated and a hard worker. They want to know if you're ready to relocate to LA. And I find it interesting because things are moving forward and they're trying to get the professionals that they deserve. And honestly, I wish them best of luck with the CLG LOL Academy. If you guys are a challenger, make sure you try it out, guys. It could be very, very interesting. If you have any question, if you're actually surprised by what they ask, let me know what you think in the comment down below. I'm actually very curious about what you think. And I hope you like this video, guys. It's been Zonabra. Cheers. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs>